Hello, and thank you once again for tuning in. You are tuned into Esoteric Guidance, and my name is Nehru. Excuse me while I reposition the phone here. Once again, happy Saturday to you. Um, yeah, welcome to the channel. I was reading something, sorry. I was reading something on the screen. So we are back with our What's Your Aura? Okay. So we are back, continuing our journey through this uh, very informative and enlightening book shared with us by Mystic Michella. You can find her on Instagram, by the way. I'm not sure what other platform she's on. Uh, that's where I found her. Okay. Um, and this was after I, had, this is recently, so I, this is the second book that she has shared with us that I am sharing on the platform. And, um, so yeah. So we are on to auras and communication, I believe, as soon as I can find, find the page. Hope your Tuesday is starting off well. Oh, okay. I hope your Tuesday starting off well and you are of good energy. I woke up this morning feeling wonderful. Um, and we are on chapter, I believe chapter three of this book as I've come through trying to find exactly where we are. We are about halfway through the book currently. Yes, chapter two. Okay. So, auras and communication. My song download, for those of you who are interested, it was 207 on the clock when I video timer when I looked over, is Jason Mraz, last name spelled M R A Z, is I'm yours. That was my song download. I believe it was sent to me this morning by my divine masculine. Thank you so much. And, um, uh, I pray and declare over my divine masculine, divine, and the divine masculine and divine feminine unions uh, around the globe. Okay, I pray and declare over you protection of your energy, protection of your spiritual wealth, protection of your f earthly wealth. Okay, protection of the seed that you are birthing forward in this lifetime. Um, even if you already have children, with your divine connection. You will be birthing light workers and star seeds. Again, that's nothing against the children you already have. Okay, hopefully you are imparting into them divine wisdom. Okay, they might be light workers and star seeds. I'm not from a previous relationship. I'm I'm not sure. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, auras and communication. Close. As you have learned also I just posted the seventh reading of the uh, book of Jubilees for those of you who are following that series as you have learned energy flows through you and the way you give voice to it matters communication is how you verbalize the energy you want to send out to the world it is also the way you receive others' intended messages and create connections among distinct energies. Communication is really about experiencing yourself in a way you want others to comprehend and hearing what others are trying to say. It's also validating giving yourself and those around you time to feel seen and heard. Each aura color has its own method of transmitting its energy and tapping into the energy of others. In this chapter, you will discover the communications, communication strengths and preferences of your aura, as well as where improvements can help you communicate more effectively. Communicate more effectively. You will also learn the communication styles of the aura colors so you can factor these into your interactions. Learning, learning, leaning, it says leaning, into your particular modes 
of expression and embracing the modes used by others will allow everyone's ideas to be heard with more acceptance, interest, and ease. Okay? Again, most people listen to respond. They don't listen to hear. Okay? 515 on the timer. That's 555. Okay? Or 33333. Uh, what your aura says about you. Each aura communicates in unique ways. Red Aura. Red Aura has many ideas and enjoys an audience who appreciates their logic-based style of communicating, often capitalizing on the fact that most people tend to sit back and let another person stand up, organize, and lead the way. The Red Aura automatically seems to do just that in any context they are in. Again, for me, leadership falls into my lap. So. Even I, even when I was a teenager and had two jobs, after I had one job through high school from 16 to 18, from 15 to 18. It was in a movie theater in Altamont Springs, Florida. Anything that I mention on this channel, names, places, people, I guess that is that are that that is names, but dates, anything like that might be significant for you as well. So have a listening ear, a hearing ear. Okay, so. Um, I was hired by Little Caesars at the age of 19 directly into management. I didn't have to start out as a crew member and all that sort of thing. I was hired directly into their management. Same thing when I later, after many years after the military, um, uh, I was, um, uh, I had a 7-Eleven in, in Winter Park, Florida. Okay. Again, right into management. I was hired on into their management program right immediately this was before they went into franchising in florida 707 on the timer today they're franchised 7-elevens in florida when i was a part of the organization they were not franchised we had regional managers and, and all that sort of thing okay um but again hired right into management um in the military from boot camp Okay, in boot camp, there was another cadet, and I did basic training at Fort Knox, and thankfully it was not co-ed. It was in the midst of all that changing when Clinton was doing the don't ask, don't tell bullshit, okay? Um, and so, yeah, that's exactly what I think about that. Um, so, um, I... Uh, there was another gentleman who was the, the, the platoon sergeant for our basic training platoon for the first two weeks. Army basic training is eight weeks. I was the platoon sergeant for the last eight, uh, six weeks of basic training. And I was the cadet that the drill sergeant chose to be promoted from E1, I didn't have any college at the time, to E2 on graduation day. Okay? And so... Uh, I've always been in leadership, always been leadership positions as a tax accountant, as an accountant, as a bookkeeper, as an accounting manager. I have been the only one because though there's been not been anyone to manage, even though I carried the title of accounting manager or or what have you, there was no one to manage. I was the entire department, payroll, payroll taxes implementing in some of those cases new payroll processes and different accounting processes and things like that I was the only one in charge of those those departments okay leadership has always come to me I did not seek it out the only time I've ever been on a jury I was the jury foreman and it was for a murder trial that happened in Edgewater Florida okay the gentleman's name is Patrick Campbell you can look the case up today he's serving I don't know how many years he got because we had a mistrial, but we, or when we got there, right, you know, how, if you've ever been on jury duty, most people hate it, um, but I didn't mind it, okay, it was interesting to me, but I like, I like mysteries, and I like solving things, and I like getting down to the bottom of things, and I, I am a, I am an advocate for justice, so when he killed his grandmother, as we found out, right, I wanted to be a part of that. Okay, he was a diagnosed schizophrenic. 
okay, who refused to take his medication, but he killed his grandmother. Again, Edgewater, Florida, you can look the case up, okay? On the first trial, I was the jury foreman for that trial, okay? The only time I've ever served on a jury thus far, I guess. Maybe it might be ever, okay? And so, and I was selected by the other people there. Again, not because I raised my hand and said, I want to be, but we're sitting in the room and they're like, okay, who's going to be the jury foreman? And two or four people like, how about you? Why, why don't you be the jury? You down there, why don't you be the, it just, it just happened, okay? It just happened. Same thing with the movie theater. Okay, I worked there again. I got that job in Altamont Springs. I worked at a movie theater in Naperville, Illinois, before we relocated to Florida in 1991. But I, uh, you know, at I don't know, 18 or something, they offered me a management position at that movie theater in Altamont Springs, Florida, and I accepted. Okay, it's always been that way for me. Leadership just comes very, very easily to me, not because I seek it out. It just finds me, okay? And I'm a sapiosexual, okay? So I am highly drawn to intellectual people, okay? I don't, I don't do small talk conversations, and that's, that's something that a lot of people probably, I guess, dislike or whatever about me or people from the past disliked about me. Okay, 11.33 when I looked at the video timer, and it's 8.33. 11.33 and 8.33 on the actual time, Mountain Standard Time in Southern Arizona, okay? And so I'm, I'm not good with small talk. I can sit in a car with a car full of people and not say anything for hours. If I don't have anything to say of quality, of substance, I don't need to, I don't just come up with stuff just, just, to, just to hear myself talk, okay? All right? Um, often capitalizing on the fact that most people tend to sit back and let another person stand up, organize, and lead the way. The red aura automatically seems to do just that in any context they are in. They don't like ideas that aren't orga organically their own, and they can have a hard time hearing others' concepts no matter how good they can, may be. Now, I'm not like that. I am definitely one who wants to, I want, because again, there's two sides to every story, right? So I always want to get the well-rounded perspective of it all, and I always try to come in with that point of view. Okay, so this is what you say, the prosecution says, okay, and this is what the defense is saying. So let me take all of this information in, maybe I would make a good judge, take all this uh, a, a literal a physical judge I am a judge of the spiritual but take all this in from both sides and let me consider it and then come back with an answer on the screen I see something that says it is finished okay on the echo screen um, red auras don't mind a conversation about the best way to approach a problem in life while they often articulate their ideas with force and confidence, <laughs> when, uh, when self-aware, they will openly engage in respectful conversation about alternative or ways forward. As long as the final say always goes to the sea, I'm not like that, okay? I have no problem listening to my divine masculine. I don't know who they are today, but listening to her and, and, and taking her advice. I, I would have no problem, and I'm gonna, not gonna have any problem with that whatsoever. Again, she comes with a certain amount of gifts, talents, abilities, esoterically and naturally, like I come to the table with a certain amount of gifts, esoterically and energetically, okay? Hmm. I was looking at the time, it's 8.36. Oh. Uh, 836 and 86 degrees. That's why it just turned the, to the temperature. 836, 86 degrees. Uh, 
Red auras love a healthy argument and are and I don't do arguments, okay? Um, real, or, real, real, red auras love a healthy argument and can handle shaking hands and ending on a uh, note of agreeing to disagree. I am like that, okay? So we agree to disagree. That's fine. Red auras are solution-based people. When they hear about a problem, they automatically set themselves in line to find and foster the solution. Being around those who want to analyze feelings and sit in emotions rather than fix the perceived problem can cause them to feel frustrated and upset. And I cannot tell you, I cannot stress enough how much this irritates me. Someone who just complains but never comes up with a solution. I hate my job. Well, leave the motherfucker and go find another one. They don't leave the job. They just constantly come home complaining about the job that they're on. Shut the fuck up and decide to leave the job or stay on the job and stop complaining about it because you are confusing the esoteric realm. You can't say be thankful for the job that gives you substance to go buy your house or purchase your food or your car or clothes or whatever and then at the same time say with the same mouth with the same throat chakra I hate my job are you are you thankful or, or, or are you or are you hateful what which which one are you are you disgusted with the job or do you like the job are you thankful for it I cannot stand that type of mentality that gets under my skin like nothing else okay I once told a gentleman of that same thing at the Rock of Central Florida where I spent 20 years before exiting because they refused to ascend and their leader Stephen Lee Parker refused to acknowledge some things okay um, that I was bringing to him that they are now finding out to be true or they now see that are true but there's no turning back for me, 17 minutes exactly on the timer, okay? So they're just left to deal with whatever karmic situations based on their failure to get out of religion. Again, 20 years with these people, okay? They're left to deal with their karma along with all the other individuals in Central Florida, okay? Um, and any other part of the country or world. Um, but I told this gentleman, his name is James. Again, I mentioned his name for a reason. James, some people call him Jim, but I told him he's a Marine, and I told him we, we, we connected based on our military experience and that sort of thing, right, um, originally, and I told him one day, his wife's name is Jessica, that might be significant for you, and I told him, I said, James, I said, do you know you're confusing Holy Spirit? Here comes a confirmation, Bert. 840 that's a five and he said oh I am I said when I ask you and I ask them all the time hey how you doing I ask people that I learned not to ask people that <laughs> I've learned don't ask everybody how they're doing do not do not ask everybody how are they doing okay so I learned to stop asking him how is he doing and then I would just say hi good morning or whatever okay because if I asked him how are you doing Oh, you know, job is, uh, or I'm looking for a job, they let me go, or I had to leave there, or whatever else, right? So when he had a job, he was complaining about the job, and then when he didn't have a job, he was complaining about how stressed out he was about not having a job, and he would do this over and over again for a year, 10 years probably. And I'm like, and one day Highest Divine White Light just guided me to tell him at church, Right in that building on at 646641 West State Road 46 in Sanford, Florida, I told him, I said, Jim, you are speaking out of both sides of your mouth, okay? Because you are saying, complaining about the job that you did not have two weeks ago when High's Divine White Light just blessed you with that job that you were complaining about not having like what what are you coming or are you going what are you doing I cannot oh I cannot as you can tell I cannot stand that negative spirit that is just 
that is just such an energy sucker. You know what I mean? Truly. Okay? Um, being around those who want to analyze feelings and sit in emotions rather than fix the perceived problem can cause them to feel frustrated and upset. This is why often I, so often I walk alone this journey. Okay? Red auras must learn that they don't always have to put their leadership into action when it comes to situations that that instead may require more emotional discourse. Um, yeah, I'm definitely not. I'm, I'm not of that vein. Okay, I am not. Okay, emotions are great, but emotions to me, emotions are 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 to be to be managed. Emotions need borders, like your heart, your boundaries. Okay, and borders. That that statement right there. No. Okay, I'm a very sympathizing person. But again, the consistency, and that's what it is, the consistent complaining without a solution or even looking into a solution, mm, I can truly say I hate that spirit. I can truly say that. Blue auras have a hard time, uh, oh, sorry, so we're on to blue auras. Blue auras have a hard time self-advocating in their exchanges with others. While they can stick up for the wants and needs of other people, around them they can't always use their voice for themselves okay um and so judy the woman who i believe birthed me um uh, is like this she gives a lot of good advice to other people but in her 67 years of living she has rarely taken her own advice which has led her to remain in poverty okay so she'll praise anybody else. She'll motivate other people. She'll 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 lift them up, encourage them, pray for them. She'll do all of that. But with herself, she doesn't do it. And so therefore, yeah. Okay. Blue auras often use their communication skills for peacemaking between others and conflict. They can inter be energetic translators of sorts reinterpreting the exact words someone says to make them more palpable or palatable sorry not palpable palatable palpable means um obvious it means plainly seen palatable means digestible um for opposing or or tasteful opposing side to digest see because blue auras are very good at communicating on behalf of others but have more difficult a more difficult time doing this for their own wants and needs. Resents, resentments can build. Their bottled up feelings and unheard needs can come out of erratic ways. Come out in erratic ways. Blue auras can have emotional outbursts that feel out of place in the moment they are delivered. They can become triggered by one slight after one slight after years and years of suffering in silence over thousands of them see that's what she does she yeah did, she didn't speak up for herself that's why she ran after the polygamous sperm donor kevin at for from 1972 until 2007 and she might still be running after him from what i've gathered esoterically again i have no communication with her today so she's in daytona or at least that's where i left her Okay, or last time I seen her, I shouldn't say left her. That's where the last time I saw her. When I left, she knew I was leaving the state. I had given everything I had left, had away, and she didn't even say I love you when I left. And neither, and she denies the sperm donor having a gun held against me, telling me he was going to shoot me in the kneecaps because I threatened him to blow up his house with all those women in it. When he took my first wife in 1998 and our daughter, who was a year and a half old. She denies sitting at the table in the living room and watching that. She denies that till this day. She's also the one who let my brother Matthew go into a coma because she didn't feed him at 13 months and allowed him to get raped, never reported it, by another man um, when he was five or six. And also, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, so she deals with her own demons even till this day and has not reached out to me, by the way. 
blue auras can take what others say personally when they get to this point and may be unable to see past their own perce uh, persecuted painful feelings okay so these blue auras also my daughter suffered alexis suffers from this in some regard they do not take constructive criticism very well constructive criticism depresses these types of individuals who have not healed these wounds okay it depresses them so trying to help her get out of depression and help her lift herself up self up and showing her the things that she's could do better or and 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 that sort of thing right how to again heal wounds right they get depressed about the things rather than take the advice and heal them okay that's a disease std sexually or spiritually transmitted demon okay um they can feel victimized uh, and sad wanting so desperately to be seen and heard the way that they see and hear others blue auras have to learn to give themselves the, that opportunity the same way they facilitate it for the people in their life learning to use their words to vulnerably express and that's key vulnerably express their own repressed feelings is essential to building the blue auras communication skills okay yellow auras where are we at with time 2618 okay um, so yellow auras in a world full of non-essential details the yellow aura knows how to slice through the pertinent points at hand since they are so naturally good at this they often pray often are often praised for it and called upon to do it in all sorts of complicated contexts again I share both my downfalls or my shortcomings that I've had karmic choices and things as well as the good side of me and I'm this is not where they're speaking of but I'm called to mention this right away okay because I speak to all of the leadership and all of that right um, again this lifetime I was just born with un birth with unconditional love and so generally speaking for 49 years I've not been karmic I've not been in karmic energy I've not functioned in dark energy right for 95% of that time I've not functioned in karma but I've made karmic choices okay I've gone back to a woman in particular one that I should not have I've made karmic choices when it came to women that I should not have married one in particular that I should not have married and so on and so forth so I've made karmic choices only to realize months you know months into the relationship that that was a wrong choice okay so everything that I do is not all beautiful and glorious and butterflies and rainbows and no it hasn't been it will be and it is today okay but that's again after a lot of spiritual work an ego death dark night of the soul uh, there's a lot that happened in the last three years to get me to where I am today but again generally this lifetime I always function in unconditional love I was an overgiver which calls people to not appreciate who I am okay they just use me as a doormat or a stepping stool okay or did witchcraft against me so that they could take my energy and use it for their good okay that's what karmics do okay that's what luciferians do that's what jezebels do okay um the yellow aura communicates what they see honestly and directly and this is truly their way of showing love mm -hmm. see. their ability to pat down uh yeah, or to pare down <laughs> to pare down an overwhelming world to a few points that are worth considering can help others immensely sometimes however the situation calls for a different type of delivery one that yellow auras are not as well versed in yellow auras learn quickly that some of those details they deem non-essential are emotions yeah i'm like that okay i am definitely like that again the last was it in the red aura I think that spoke to the emotions in the last sentence yeah okay I am I am a if you if you don't want 
If you don't want a warrior, if you don't want a spiritual assassin, don't come, don't, don't, don't come to me for help, for guidance. Don't come to me. It was 29, 2950 on the timer. Don't come to me. Okay? Because I come with a certain amount of, of, of strength. And that strength is big, it's bold, it's the Incredible Hulk. So if you don't need that type of energy, I am a lace them back up and get back out there kind of person. Yep, I'll give you a hug. I'll console you. Again, unconditional love. Okay? I enjoy Hallmark movies and and Ellen N movies and I enjoyed all of those movies and I look forward to sitting down and watching those movies with my divine masculine. Again, one of my favorite childhood movies and books is Where the Red Fern Grows. Okay? So I am a very emotional individual. Okay? Probably cry easier than most men, but I cry from the through the passion, not from not through hurt and anger and, and all of that. I don't cry when I'm in those moods. Okay? I get I get fierce when I'm in those moods, okay? Again, from from whatever the whatever the quiet energy of the Hulk was, I don't remember the character in the TV show. I don't remember what his name was. Lou Albanner. Yeah, Lou Albanner, I think. Um I get into the Incredible Hulk mode. And trust me, the Incredible Hulk is not going to cry. That's not that energy. Okay? Lou Albanner might. But the Incredible Hulk is not. Okay? So, again, okay, so you went through this. We got through that. Okay, now it's time to regroup. How do we get ourselves back out there, back in the foxhole, on the front line, to continue on the journey? How do we do that? Okay, again, I am here for those who are ascended or those who are ready to ascend. I'm not here for those who are, are wallowing in their sorrows. I am not here for those individuals. Okay? Confirmation with that speed going by. Uh, whatever that is. Because of this, Okay, so let me read that sentence again. Yellow auras learn quickly that some of those details they deem non-essential are emotions. Because of this, they can be seen as a bit tough or hard to crack. Uh, uh, as a bit tough or hard to crack. Yeah, I probably perceive that way. Certainly by the enemy, and I am. They perceive emotions as factual pieces of information or problems that can be tackled and solved instead of being thoughtfully studied mm -hmm. to some degree. Again, childhood wounds, I am very much interested in helping others heal, heal their childhood wounds. But that person who is ready, that divine being who is ready to heal the childhood wounds, they're ready to ascend. I'm not interested in counseling somebody for a year and we continue to rehash the same thing over and over and over again. I'm, I am not that type of counselor. I'm not that type of healer. Yellow auras can speak to themselves in a way that is just as cutting and cool. I am, I do. The same way I deal with others is the way that I deal with myself. I am authentic through and through. Okay, it was 3333, 3333 on the video, okay? Leaving them needing more nurturing than they know how to deliver. No, nah, I nurture myself. Again, I've walked this road alone for a long time. The yellow aura must learn that emotions aren't always something to rush through. Rather, they can be soft, uh, com contemplative places to consider for a moment. Not for any long period of time. I'm telling you, not for any long period of time. Okay? In the military, they teach you when you are doing when you are doing parades and you are you are you are you are marching and all that sort of thing. They tell you that if someone falls out, let's say the soldier in front of you falls out, they faint. Right? Let's talk about a parade or a ceremony of some sort, a military ceremony. Right? If they faint or pass out because of hydration, they lock their knees. Right? All the things you're taught not to do, or yeah, taught not to do. 
right? You are told to step over them. That is what the military teaches. It was 34, 30, 34, 44 on the timer when I looked over. You are taught to step over them. Why is that? Because if you sit there, right, too long worried about them, you either pick them up, you carry them with you, or you step over them. If you sit there and sit there, right, you go, you will catch a bullet to the head. Okay? You will become a casualty. And I'm not becoming a casualty for the sake of spending too much time helping someone who isn't willing to help themselves. All right. Um, so purple aura. Uh, let's see where we are here with time. 3529. Yeah. Okay. So I'll read purple aura and we will end it. Um, the what's your aura reading for today. Again, thank you so much subscribers, new listeners, returning listeners. Thank you so much. I appreciate your love, your energy. And um, yeah. Yeah. What, what you are bringing to the channel. Thank you for sharing the videos, by the way. I am blessed when I see the, the amount of shares that the videos on this platform have. That is, that is, that blesses me. That blesses me. Okay. So purple aura, the purple auras world of constant change creates a similar communication pattern of dynamic movement. They understand. Oh, also, let me say this. Okay. So where my compassion and where my patience is, is with children. That's where an extra amount is extended to, to in regards to patients for their processes, for them learning, for them, for them growing. It's with children. Okay, I have a tremendous amount of patience when it comes to working with children. I look forward to times and the days and the moments that I get to spend at St. Jude's Children's Hospital with the children that I am guided to spend time with. I look forward to those days and those times and, and helping them through their healing processes. I look forward to that, okay? Um, purple Wars, they understand it's okay to change one's mind and that change should happen often to further personal growth. I would say be quick to change rather than slow. The purple energy aura, I said energy aura, doesn't often look for one particular answer, rather, that, rather they have an intuitive understanding that in this strange world, there are an infinite number of ways to respond to a question. Again, well-rounded, both sides, listening to the defense and listening to the prosecution. Purple auras enjoy the freedom of communication and therefore seek out people who are equally as fluid as accepting, as fluid at accepting new ideas. They enjoy conversing with open minds, again, sapiosexuals, but when they meet someone who is less open, they find it very find it very entertaining to push the buttons. No, I don't do that. They so effortlessly recognize in that person. That's yeah. That that's a that's a dark energy. Um, any sort of thought or a low vibration south node energy, moral code or societal belief that is widely accepted as true is fascinating to purple auras and they often target these assumptions to test their stability. Creating a question in the mind of others is what purple auras strive for when communicating. They seek to stir things up and see if they can understand excuse me what uh, understand if what others see so strongly about can be changed or moved in some way. Let me read that again. They seek to stir things up and see if they can understand if what others feel so strongly about can be changed or moved in some way. This, again, one of the things that I focus on often is racism, systemic racism. Okay? I was birthed into a, in America, so yeah. So systemic racism, black and white. There is no black and there is no white. Okay, I will speak forever in my, all my days 
about the relinquishing of or ridding this this nation, the world of black people and white people. No one is black and no one is white. We are all a shade of brown. There is only one race and it's the human one. Okay? There's only one race. Okay? And it's duality. There's one race. Okay? So I am a brown American. I am not an African American. I am nothing this lifetime other than a brown American. I was born in America, fought eight years for this country. I am a brown American. I am not a black American. I'm not black. I'm not a black man. If you don't believe me, If you don't believe me, look at my leg color. Does that look black to you? This charger is black. Are those the same color? Um, freedom of communication. creating a question they seek this for purple energy aura this exchange of information energetically levels up both parties mm -hmm. so getting rid of that systemic racism seed okay yeah purple auras can sometimes take their rebellious spirit too far in discourse where it will go from genuine questioning to a need for discord, okay? Again, I have no problem being a rebel against all the systemic society norms. I have no problem being a rebel. Again, he's a rebel and he'll never ever be any good. He's a rebel cause he never ever does what he should, but just because he doesn't do what everybody else does. That's no reason why she won't share this love. He's always good to me, always treats me tenderly. He's not a rebel, no, no, no. He's not a rebel, no, 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 to me. Right, that song is sung by the Crystals, 1960. Okay? Um, uh, purple auras can sometimes, uh, did I read that? Yes, I'll read it again. Purple Wars can sometimes take their rebellious spirit too far in discourse where it will go from a genuine questioning to a need for discord. This is what I believe, I'll finish this and I'll say it. Purple Auras need to focus on their ability to open minds and promote creativity with their style of communication. That is why I promote authenticity and that's where that comes from, okay? So I promote living your truest, authentic self, being unashamed and unapologetic, your highest, purest, truest version of yourself, okay? That is the rebellious part of me. So the rebellious part of me goes against societal norms that says, I'm brown, so I got to be married to a brown woman. I'm glad and thankful for all the diversity for which I've dated. I'm so thankful, okay? Because... It has helped me become a more well-rounded spirit, a more well-rounded human being in on this planet and esoterically, okay? You have been other races in other lifetimes. How dumb is racism? You are hating on, if you are a hater of a race, you are hating on a race that probably you were in some other lifetime. How ignorant. Okay, thank you so much as always for tuning in. My name is Nehru. This is Esoteric Guidance. Thank you so much again for those of you who are enjoying the What's Your Aura um, uh, journey at this time. I know I am. And again, I'm also picking up on things. I'm like, mm, yep, that is me. That isn't me. Uh, that was me. Or I have done that. Or I haven't done that. Or thankfully, I have not been that this lifetime. Um, and so, yeah, right. So I've healed childhood wounds. The one childhood wound that I did have, which is why I became an overgiver.